Cool. This, uh, this topic is actually going to kind of piggyback on this, but we're first going to watch a video. Does anybody watch the Valuetainment podcast with Patrick Bet David? Does that name sound familiar? So he has a, a book called Your Next Five Moves, but he also has a really phenomenal podcast. Uh, I'd go suggest subscribing to his YouTube channel. He consistently brings on just phenomenal indiv individuals. Uh, this one specifically is with Tom Brady. So it is about nine minutes long. Uh, so I'm going to kind of speed it up a little bit um, just so we can get through it. But please write down anything that stands out to you about Tom Brady. Who's familiar with that name? Does anybody know who Tom Woo! Brady is? Okay, a couple of us. So uh, I, I think that there's something to say about him as a leader, but also just how he uh, really became a master of his craft. Um, does anybody know where he was drafted in the NFL draft? Sixth round. Sixth round. Was it 198, 199? 199th pick. Okay. That's basically like you standing. Anybody play kickball in, in elementary and you're like the last pick? That was basically like Tom Brady. Okay. And so uh, to see what he did in his career and to uh, create the impact that he did in that organization um, is phenomenal. So we're going to watch this clip, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Just keep it there for a second. Thank you. So um, there's some things that really caught my attention, especially in the beginning of this clip. Thank you. I forgot I don't have the lapel mic on today. Um, so I want to just check in and see what, what caught your attention about some of the things that made Tom Brady such a great athlete. He takes total accountability for everything. Like he never blames anyone for anything, which is astounding. Like it makes sense that he takes total accountability for his life, every single action. Yeah, it's a great one, Austin. I. Well, I think according to the book, I don't know where he was going with that, but to me, the enemy that Tom Brady chose was not the typical thought enemy. It wasn't the other team. It was his age, right? His enemy wasn't, oh, shoot, it was old father time. So he decided to make all the decisions to go and fight against father time so that he could last longer so that, I mean, his end goal wasn't, I don't know, I feel like this is a Keller Williams thing. His end goal wasn't seven Super Bowls. That was kind of the lag measure. His lead measure was, I want to play 10 more years. I want to play five more years. And obviously, he's talented in all aspects um, of his life. He took accountability everywhere, so he was able to accomplish so much. Yeah. Well said, Austin. That's a phenomenal point. And it's the reality, too, is that right here, Tana. Um, one of the things that I, I love on that piece is, is uh, Patrick Bet David spoke about his book, that choosing your enemies wisely is actually choosing motivators, external motivators that can help drive you. A lot of us are motivated towards pleasure, but the majority of people are motivated away from pain as well. And so thinking about, and sometimes it's competition, healthy competition, right, can be looked at as your enemies. And so uh, he goes into a little bit more on that. Tana. Um, I think the one thing that stood out just relatable, like in, in our business too, is talking about they weren't maybe the most talented team, but they won due to processes, they won due to culture, those things that they can create, those things that they can control. Yeah. And so same thing, we may not always be the most talented in what we're doing, but that, you know, processes, consistency, mm. culture. Yes. Yeah, processes and consistency in the approach, separating factor for sure. Anything else, Angie? I really appreciated that uh, somebody else's win didn't take anything away from him. His ability to just celebrate their success is and it doesn't change anything for him, I think is huge and very relevant in our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kalina. Um, I was thinking that exact same thing and I'm literally like the crazy football mom on the sidelines, like screaming my guts out. Like screaming, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I'm literally like screaming in place. My fourth grade, fourth grade to have a football is like life, and so I'm like screaming, like, "Get your guy!" You know, and then we we like have not lost in two years, and then just a few couple weeks ago, we had our first loss, and it's like so good for me to watch this and be like, "It's okay if sometimes it goes someone else's way." Like for him to be able to say that, I'm like, "Okay, I should be able to be okay with it going someone else's way." Sometimes I don't have to win in football every week, so. I just love that he said that. It's a good lesson for me in business and 
like everything, but it just sometimes it doesn't go your way, and that's okay. Mm. Hunter, I heard a quote over the weekend that I've been reflecting on a lot, and it was that if you expect nothing in life and appreciate everything in your life, it's really magical. Mm. So I think the ways that I can be more appreciative for my surroundings, my situation, and then also just not expect the outcome, but just to stick to processes and systems. Yeah. Does anybody know the average retiring age of an NFL player? How long they typically stay in the NFL? Usually about late 20s, early 30s. Okay. How old was Tom Brady still winning Super Bowls? So uh, the one thing I want to point out is the very start of his conversation, he opened up and he said, uh, when I really doubled down on my health and wellness, it changed my business, essentially is what he said. And for him, it was when he was 30, he's going to pay till he's 35. And what did he say about how he felt at 35 compared to 30? Anybody catch that? He felt better from an energy standpoint and from how his body was operating at 35 than 30. After five years of additional beating, I don't know if you follow football, but quarterbacks get hit pretty hard. Okay, And if anything, they were targeting Brady a little bit harder than other quarterbacks because they knew how dangerous he was. Right. So just think about this because I think it applies to our businesses. We, we've talked about how you are each business athletes. And so the question I want to ask you is, is simply looking at your life, how are you investing into your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health to allow you to play at your best? I want you to think about how are you being intentional about creating more energy in your life so that you can be able to show up for your clients at a higher level. Uh, does anybody know how much LeBron James spends on his body per year? Have we seen this? A million dollars is his expenditure for his body. <laughs> okay. So I want you to think about how are you treating your health, whether that comes to your diet, to your exercise regimen, your mental health, meditation, all these different pieces play a vital role in how you're able to achieve success and your sustainability. So for some of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but if you've been in the business for five years, 10 years, how many of you might feel some sense of burnout in life, right? Or we get to a certain time of the year, fourth quarter, and you might feel, man, it is tiring to get up day in and day out and still pour into my craft. So I want you to think about what, do you, what might you have to do differently in quarter four to elevate that energy that you have pouring into your business, okay? And then one that was pointed out is he, he spoke about he wasn't, they weren't the most talented, but he specified that they won on work ethic and, and processes. So your systems in your business create something called free energy. So free energy, think about systems as a way of delivering value consistently, but trying to minimize the amount of energy it takes to deliver that value. Okay. So some of it is you might have to go and inspect the systems within your business and ask yourself, how can I become more effective? Okay. How can I be more effective? For example, if I were to send out a mass text message, a very general text message to 2,000 people, Versus if I were to get on the phone with 100 people, voice to voice, or get in, in, into face to face interactions with those people, which one would be more effective? Face to face. Face to face. One would be more efficient, the 2000 text, because it would only take 10 minutes to send out to everybody, if that. But there's one that's more effective that's going to get a better <laughs> result on the back end. Does that make sense? So don't sacrifice effectiveness for efficiency in your business. There are some areas and some pieces of your business where you need efficiency. When you need to scale, there are some things you need to build in in an efficient way. But do not compromise by getting rid of effectiveness. Does that make sense? So think of highest and best quality touches, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about as far as a strategy you can start implementing in your business. But here's one quote that I want you to think about. This Confucius quote says, a healthy man wants a thousand things. A sick man wants only one.
I don't know uh, how many of you have had either COVID or a cold or a strep throat or any kind of sickness. And you're like, I don't care about anything else. Like, I don't care about business anymore. I actually don't want to like think about anything besides health, right? And so this is such an important piece to think about is how are you each week investing into your physical, mental, spiritual, emotional health, okay? So think about those things. And I promise a byproduct, one of those lag measures is that you will have a more profitable business. If you are more clear of mind, if you have more energy, if you're able to uh, show up in a better way for your clients. Okay. So we're going to get into a, a specific strategy, and this is really around your database. So we've talked about your database is your business. And one of the most underutilized strategies for agents is really figuring out how to amplify the impact in their database. Okay. How do you make it more effective? How do you produce more results from your database? And this is called the seasons of your data bank. Okay. So Gary Keller talks about how your database is your data bank, and it is uh, a huge uh, you know, piece in determining how much income you're going to make in the year ahead. So we're going to go through three different seasons of your data bank, okay? And season one is your fall cleanup. So this is actually perfect timing right now to start deploying this in your business, okay? So your fall cleanup is decide what information you want to have for each person in your database. So determine what information is going to be the most impactful, okay? Now we know that if you have phone number, email address, birthday, home anniversary, those things are very valuable because you can engage in different ways with your clients if you have those five pieces of information. Some nice to have pieces or some additional ones um, is any kind of like uh, hobbies or things that you know that client likes. Maybe a sporting team, maybe their pet's name. Like there's additional ideas that you can be able to capture information that you will be able to use in the future, right? <laughs> If they're going on a family vacation to Disneyland, why might that be valuable for you to use three months down the road? You can ask them about it, right? How was Disneyland a couple months ago? What does that show them about your conversation? That you remember Yep, active listening, that you cared about that conversation, that you care about them. So start thinking, picking up on those important nuggets that they might just say in a natural conversation that you can put in your pocket and be able to use later on. Number two is find out where the information holes are in your data bank. You have their addresses, but not their birthday, for example. So within your CRM, with whatever platform you're using, you should be able to search for people who do not have an email address or they do not have a home address. Okay? And so you can get very intentional and say, I'm going to focus on collecting this piece of information for my people in my database. And then number three is creating a list of everyone that should be in your database but isn't. A really great way to do this is go back through your Facebook friends and just look at faces and be like, actually, I realize this person is not in my database. I haven't talked to them for seven years, but I'd like to rekindle that relationship. Put them in your database with no phone, no email, but it basically sets the reminder for you to go capture that information for that person moving forward. Okay. And make it intentional. I will tell you what we're going to get into one of the seasons where very quickly, this is going to be the best time to capture information, right? Coming up uh, against the holidays. So that's fall cleanup. You're, you're then going to focus on the winter of renewal. Season number two. So number one is renew all of your relationships that you may not have been purposeful about maintaining over the course of the year. Winter time makes this way easy because there's reasons to reach out, right? What reasons might cause us to reach out to our database in quarter four? Christmas. Christmas. What else? Like Charity. Or... Thanksgiving. What else? Any plans of moving? What was said over here? Events, client events, New Year's. Like there's plenty of reasons to reach out in quarter four. So it actually makes it super easy. And uh, so it has a, a lot of natural touch points 
in the last three months of the year. This is also the time of the year where no one thinks twice about receiving a gift, a gift card, or anything alike, an invitation to do charity work, stuff like that. So here's one of the cool strategies is very simply send out, uh, there's a website called Postable. If you want to write that one down, P-O-S-T-A-B-L-E.com. On Postable, you can create a link where you can send it out to people and you can say very simply, hey, uh, you know, Jason, it's been, um, Jason, we're sending out some Christmas cards for the holiday season. We'd love to send you one. Can you fill this out for me so I have your right address? Okay. So what's the reason for them giving you their address? Christmas card. So it's very non-threatening. But what else are you going to use that home address for down the road? Right? Invites, handwritten notes, maybe sending a birthday card to their home, doing a free CMA for them. So there's a, plon a, a ton of touch points that you can do beyond that. But Christmas time is the most natural and easiest way to ask for that information. Postable will also, at the same time, ask them for their birthday, their email, their phone number. So you'll get multiple pieces of information all at the same time. And again, they think it's because you're sending a Christmas card. So two things, build the Christmas card. Okay, so follow up on that promise, uh, but then be able to use that information moving forward. So that's the best time to mine data for your database. Okay, so use this time to fill in the gaps. Spring summer explosion is March 1st through July 31st. So this is really focusing on first quarter. A lot of the activities you're going to be taking is dependent on the information you're collecting and the small deposits you're making into those relationships right now. So quarter four is where you start cleaning up that database and start collecting information so you can start making those deposits into those relationships in quarter one. So after you re reconnected, this is the buying and selling season for real estate. Maintain relationships, hustle hard, and collect all of the transactions that you planted seeds for in the winter. So if you're not planting seeds right now, you will not be able to reap harvest come spring. Okay, So start being very intentional about how you are uh, collecting information from your database and then how you're investing into those relationships. I'm going to flash this slide. I'm going to pause really quick. Um, as, you, as you see this simple format, of each quarter basically focusing on a different approach to clean up your database and start providing more value for it. What ahas or things come to mind? Are there any other strategies that you use that we haven't talked about? Hunter. I just want to speak to this right here. So whatever system you're in, I agree with your command, or whatever CRM you're in, I think probably the easiest way to do this would be just to take however many people that you want to clean up, right? So if you want to clean up your whole database, right? Divide that by 13 weeks. 13 weeks in a quarter, right? And again, how many people you have to contact in a week, divide that by five. Then you know how many people you need to, how many contacts that you need to get all of that information for in a day. And that actually makes it really, like, it makes it pretty bite-sized. You can handle that maybe three or four a day. So then perfect. So the next quarter, you're just going to have three to four people a day. You're going to get on Facebook. You're going to find out all the relevant information. You're going to reach out to them in some way. You're going to go track that down. So it might look a little overwhelming that you know you have to have a phone, you have to have an email address, you have to have all this information, but if you just break it down and say, okay, today I just need to reach out to these three people and get that information, by the end of it, you'll be able to go into the winter and the summer and, and have a, a full database. Yeah, that's a great great part. And one, one piece on that is that it's progress, not perfection with your database. So just ask yourself, like for some people, it might be awkward for them for you to ask for their address, send them a card. So for those people, it might just be like, hey, I want to send you something through email. So what's your email? Or it might be just, you don't even have their phone number. You might have to message them on Facebook Messenger and, and be able to collect their phone number. I did a food drive um, two years in a row for Tabitha the Great, and I posted it on my Instagram and my Facebook, and people came out of the woodwork to get food. Um, we did cereal and canned foods and whatever they wanted to donate and i'm not kidding you they told their friends their friends told their friends and they just were dropping food at my house and honestly i think that would be where if you had a qr code at your house and be like hey could i just do it to get it so i can send you a thank you email or whatnot people would be totally willing because people were so generous it was insane we had to do 
free um, pickup trucks totally overflowing to drop off the food and they were so just so grateful and people were just so kind and generous and we had to actually have a special day to drop our food off because they had so much food and people were just more than willing and so kind to do food donations so that that really worked and i wasn't doing it for anything i had just heard from someone that they needed food and they were really in desperate need for you know dry cereal and stuff because it doesn't expire and you know it was people were just kind and generous and super willing but i think that that was just an experience i had yeah which is a phenomenal one because uh, that is a very easy way to connect with your database without it being about real estate, right? Naturally, real estate conversations can happen, but this is a way for you to be able to give back into the community and for them to also recognize you as somebody who has an impact in the community. So it's a great, great, great approach. So these are all three seasons on one uh, slide. We will send these out so you can go ahead and screenshot or print this out later on, but that would be our high encouragement to focus on fall cleanup. Right now, you've basically got 30 days to do that. You then will move into your winter, winter of renewal, and then your third season is spring and summer explosion. So if you want to have a boom in business come 2024, these are the things to lean into. Okay. So here's a, a system that goes along with that. So number one is serve your sphere of influence at a high level. We talked about in boot camp where you want to focus on in enhancing the touch points that you have. How do you make them more useful, more relevant, more impactful, and in making sure that you're consistent, consistently touching your database over time. So number two is complement. Now in this case, an 82 year uh, or touches per year. And this was a team from Megacamp that shared this. This was their approach. And when they talk about 82 touches per year, um, what happens is they're, they're, they're explaining how valuable social media is today when it comes to increasing your touch points with your database. Okay? So realizing that it's not all about text messages and phone calls, how can you engage with your database on social media as well? And then number three is run an event system that deepens relationships. So there's a, a, an impact pyramid that shows how high of an impact a type of communication has on a relationship. And what they found is that your one-on-one -on -one interactions are the highest impact on a relationship. But number two was events and seminars. And so using that on purpose to deepen relationships, events and seminars, okay? Must be relevant and useful or needed. Don't, don't offer junk, okay? Just as a way to get a touch point in. Make sure that it's useful, relevant, and needed. Recognize that the invitations and communication are more important than the event. So when you're running events, it's actually not about how many people show up. It's how many you connect with, how many you engage with. Okay, It's the invitation that matters, not necessarily how many people show up. So judge your success on how much activity you have because a lot of people who just can't make it because of timing or whatever, it's the being top of mind that counts. Okay, That's the, the golden wisdom there. And then number three is the events must reflect who you are culturally and represent who you are in the marketplace. So just really being authentic in your approach with how you do business. I'm going to skip this one for time. You'll get it in the slides. But this one I would, I would definitely take a picture of and I would focus on. Okay. So this is uh, Anna Kay, again at Megan Camp, shared this. And this is her rules for building a consumer experience. I want you to think about it that way is instead of thinking of it as a 36 touch program, think of it as what is your consumer experience touch program look like? And, it, and uh, one of her things that she says is it, it, it all starts with a standard of excellence. Then we challenge conventional wisdom and finally we hide delightful surprises along the way. We are not doing functions, we are creating experiences. So a lot of people look at real estate professionals as providing just a function, right? And there are some people who create a very thought out process or experience for their consumer, for their client, and that's what creates a repeat and referral business. So you wanna get very intentional about that. And the way to do this are these three steps. So number one is embed delightful surprises as often as possible. So if you do the same thing as everybody else, it's nothing special, okay? So if you're providing the exact same experience that their previous agent has provided for them, 
it is nothing special. And uh, the way they, they said this is people always remember the surprises, never the expected moments. I've definitely seen this with my wife. She reacts very differently if I bring her flowers on a Tuesday, random day of the month, versus if I do it on, on, on Valentine's Day, right? Like she expects it on Valentine's Day. So think about your clients' relationships the same way is if you're doing the expected, it's nothing special. Does that make sense? So the little things all add up, be unique and provide value. Number two, the second area here is challenge the status quo. So think in your business new, different, or better. What's something new that I can add, a new valuable touch point? What is something I can do slightly different than everybody else is doing? Or how can I do it better than everybody else is doing? Okay, new, different, better. Those are the three approaches that you can take to your business in enhancing your systems, your processes, okay? Uh, bullet point on that is to optimize the consumer experience, you have to first be aware of it. So you actually have to go through and document how you're currently providing value. Like write down, how, what is my value proposition to my clients? And then I want you to really look at that and say like, well, would I hire somebody based off of these things? Like, is it anything that's special or is it just the common experience? And ask yourself what you can do to, to create a separating factor. Uh, bullet point number three on this one's interesting is ask yourself, why do we do it like that all the time and then improve everything always? So why do I do things a certain way? Is it because somebody else told me that was the best way to do it? Was it because of efficiency? And I kind of lean towards what's the quickest measure or the least energy. So thinking about why do I do things a certain way? And then the last one is adopt a standard of excellence. So never check boxes as a function. Instead, create experiences. And number two is probably the most important is execution above ideas. Execution above ideas. So you want to define one to three ideas and execute, test, and evolve. So too often we get stuck in this constant creation process of like, I'm going to add new things to my business, but we never finish it. <coughs> we never actually implement it. And so don't get hung up, hung up on perfection. Just make progress. Just start doing activities that are going to make a difference. Awesome. Thoughts as we wrap up today? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I know we kind of talked two different concepts. One is your health. Your health is going to matter more than ever, stepping into quarter four, and then also 2024. We are in a marathon with the current environment that we're in. Interest rates may not come down until 2025. If that is the, is the case, do you have enough energy, mentally, emotionally, physically, to be able to make it to 2025? All right. And if not, why not change that energy plan now? And then the second item is delivering different value to your clients, okay? So making sure that you're upgrading your processes and the value that you're delivering to people. Thoughts as we wrap up? I just have one comment. So one of the top teams in the state, Ben Kinney's team, they, I don't know if it was intentional or an accident, but they printed a ton of letterheads with a message, and the message didn't print, just the letterhead. They said his team, their contact information, and nothing on the, on the sheet. Rather than toss that out, they actually still just sent it to their SLI. They just said, you know what, we're just going to send it anyways. And I'm not saying that you should send just nothing in value, but they just did it as a text. And they had so many people reach back out to them and say, hey, there was nothing on this letter. Or they could reach out to them and say, hey, we had people that said, we did, you know, our, our message didn't print. So I think the, that is just a testament of, like, whatever you're going to do, just do it. Just start. Just go. Send it. Do it, right? And then implement and improve as you go. But nothing is going to get more results than action. Thank you, Hunter. Awesome. Little plug for next week. Please be at the Builder Expo. We're not doing team meetings, so don't show up here at 11 a.m. We're going to be at Grove Station in Pleasant Grove. Uh, check your email for the invitation for the address. But same place as last year, we'll have a, a ton of builders there ready to provide value for your business. Okay. And I don't see him here, though. Cody's not here. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, Interland, for lunch, and lunch is in the back. Have a great week.